another example of a moving average, I use this example to show you that sometimes the moving average doesn't work. And one of those times is usually when we are having a strong range. Uh, in these cases, the moving, since the market is not trending, it is neither, it can go be above or below the moving average. So the moving average just moves in the middle. As I said, moving averages are also used to define trend. So when the moving average is looking like that, then obviously we're having a range. And it cannot be used, although they, there were some reactions inside, but uh, those are two dangerous spots to go into. As we, as if you remember last time we talked about range, it's best to either sell the top of the range or buy the bottom of it. So in those cases, the moving coverage is basically useless, even the 200 one. Now here, uh, three examples where we can consider the moving average uh, to be working, but as you know, you already know that it's an area, it's not just a line. But uh, if you consider this line as a support area or resistance area, you know there are two chances when the price gets closer. Either it will bounce and uh, reverse the current trend, or it will break it. So in those cases, you can get trapped easy, very easily if you're using only the moving average as a sign on because here, for example, you can count this as a break. Although it's an area, it's, it is not an indefinite area, so you cannot say, okay, this, it's an area and it's all the way to here because if you wait to there, you'll miss the beginning of a trend or a reversal, of course. So in, in that case, uh, after you can see here, the price actually bounced a bit from the moving average line but then broke it with a very strong bearish candle, uh, which can uh, say to you that, okay, it bounced. It was, uh, the line was tested a second time. It failed, so we are now in a downtrend. And maybe you jump in and you know, sell the uh, pair or stock or commodity, whatever you're trading, but you can get trapped. That's why uh, always use additional confirmation signals or additional tools to define if this is a legitimate break or it's a fake one. Now, another strategy that you might find on the internet is I've tested it. Uh, it didn't work that well for me, but it can work for you, so you can try it at home, is using multiple moving averages. Now, by doing so, uh, basically it's like looking at three different time frames. You know, last time we talked, if, uh, for example, you're looking at an overall downtrend on the H4, uh, then you can go down to the H1 where you might have an uptrend. And then you can go to the M15 time frame where you might have a range. So the idea of the uh, three moving averages is basically kind of the same. Uh, you should use uh, three averages with three different periods. I have uh, checked this strategy exactly, but you can work around with the periods uh, to uh, better assess the situation and to give you a better signal to back test it, uh, check out the history of the market and how it works until you find the perfect combination. But the idea of this strategy is pretty simple. If we consider the three period moving average, basically the M15, time frame and the six period moving average, the uh, H1 time frame and the nine period moving average, the H4. So the overall trend is down, obviously. Uh, this is not the perfect example here, but uh, the idea is that when the moving averages are aligned, like if the trend is aligned on all time frames, so if you have a downtrend on H4, downtrend on H1 and downtrend on M30 or M15, then obviously you're, you're in a very, very strong doubt trend and you can find uh, some nice possibilities to enter and to uh, make some profits of that downtrend. So here the averages work the same way. When the two uh, smaller ones cross the uh, bigger one and align the direction they all are going, this is an indication that you have entered into a very strong trend. Again, we have uh, the same thing here, but with an uptrend, as you can see, the two averages are uh, crossing the third one from below, 
meaning that uh, we are entering into an uptrend. And since the averages are aligning themselves, this is a strong indication that this uptrend might actually continue a bit longer, as it did in this case. But again, sometimes this doesn't work. So for example, uh, you can see here, first we had a cross down, both moving averages cross the third one, the bigger one. I know it's a little bit hard to see with all those things on the graph. I'm sorry, I'll try. If you have any questions or you can't see anything or don't understand anything, you can ask me, I'll try to explain it. Uh, so here you can see that we're having a cross. The moving averages are aligned. So naturally we expect a downtrend like here. But this doesn't happen. The moving averages turn and we're uh, continuing the uptrend. That is why you can, you can use them as a soul signal. But as I said, uh, here we have the same situation. As I said, you need to have uh, very good risk or money management because let me give you a just a very quick example. Let's say you take every cross, you open a position on every cross. So here you would have won a lot, as you can see. Here again, you could have won a lot. Here you are going to lose. Here uh, you could have won again. Here. Uh, you could have won, you could have lost, it really depends. But the point is that if you have a good risk management, money management strategy, a good technique to enter the mar on the market, you could have maximized the profits from this run, from this run, and here uh, you wouldn't have uh, lost that much here as well. Uh, here you maybe, uh, you could have finished at zero, for example. And if you make the final calculus, you will be ahead at the end of the month or at the end of the year. It depends what uh, period you are watching at. Any questions about m multiple moving averages or uh, the 200 moving average? Or we can continue with a bit of a different usage. Uh, Pascal will tell you a few things about that. And we'll continue with the next indicator after that. Just in the trader's mind. Yeah. In my mind, 24 will make more sense to look at the power chart, for example. For, for, for me, too, yeah. Uh, yeah, so maybe you should consider that uh, on the markets, they're not, they're, most of them are not open 24 hours. So basically, even if you see like a 24 hour moving index, the real one. It's uh, trading six hours and a half, maybe eight. But uh, the CFDs, basically the market, the indexes that are moving, that are, you can see that they're moving uh, 24 hours, are based on the ones that are opened, uh, the, cash, that the cash indexes that are opened during the day for six hours. So basically, uh, if I can answer your questions uh, correctly and I can understand it, uh, those numbers are based mainly on the indexes uh, that are real and that are open for, let's say, six hours and are trading on the real stock exchange because they're the leading one. Uh, just before you continue, sorry, I, I want to add here about the two ways of using moving averages we spoke about. Uh, they work better at higher time frames. On lower time frames, you, you are more likely to see things like that or things like that. So if you are going to use moving averages as a signal or a, a way of trading, uh, better use it on higher time frames. Or if you can, uh, how to say it, make them work on the lower time frames, well, that would be great. But usually they work better at the higher time frames, especially for the 200 moving average. And. Uh Actually, if, if, if you just use moving average for helping you to analyze. So if you remember last week, we told you that uh, a trend, there is a trend inside a trend, inside a trend, and so on and so on. So if you remember, when you have an up trend, so here you have an up trend, and inside this up trend, you have up trend and down trend. And an up trend inside an up trend is called the uh, impulsion and the opposite, it's called the correction. So when you have those crosses, 
and when you have the free moving average aligned. So as Ilian has said, it means that you have a strong trend. It's an uptrend, of course. Uh, then if you notice, up, sometimes there is uh, red candles that are going inside the moving average. It happens here, it happens here, it happens there, and here. And you have the same thing when you have a downtrend, but of course it's uh, green candles. It happens uh, here. And uh, on the uptrend here, it's the red candle uh, happen here and happen here. And actually, it's not just a red candle, but you have to see it's, it's a candle that is going inside the moving average. So here you have your impulsion and your correction. So you have the main trend. So this is your uh, uptrend channel. You don't do channel, you just use the moving average. And every time you have a uh, candle that are breaking the, 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 the moving average, you know that you have a, a correction. So you have one correction here, one correction there, one here, and one here. Let's say that you want to buy every correction, and this is what you have to do. You would have tried to buy somewhere here. You would have tried to buy somewhere here. You would have tried to buy somewhere here, and somewhere here. And if you remember one of the things that I have told you, you can't trade the same way at the beginning of a trend and at the end of a trend. So of course, if you are success, if you try to buy here, you have more chance to win than if you try to buy here. And this is why actually here, if you buy, you're gonna lose, while if you buy here, you're gonna win. Uh, this chart shows the same thing, but maybe uh, with more color. So here you have again the two moving average. So it's a one hour chart. So this one, maybe it's a three days moving average. So it means that it calculates the moving, the price of the last three days. And the short one, probably it's a six hours moving average. So what you can see, uh, let's take an easy example, and after we're gonna see when uh, things happen in a, uh, are very complicated. The longest moving average gives you the main trend. So uptrend, downtrend, uptrend, downtrend, uptrend, downtrend. And every time you have an uptrend inside the big uptrend, you are in impulsion. So here, you don't have to look for any trade. You just wait. You have to wait this. You have to wait a red area inside a green area. You have to wait a green area inside a red area. So here and uh, here and the red area here inside the green area. So this is, as example, a way to analyze trends, so main trend and correction and impulsion using moving average. Uh, sometimes things happen, you know, like here, I will call this a small, I don't know actually how to, don't be, uh, to, to say it in a, in a good way. Uh, let's say a small piece of shit, or I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah, w what you have to do when you have a cross, uh, so I call it uh, imbroglio. Uh, I, I think it's English, imbroglio also, no? It, imbroglio, it's when things are, are mixed. Uh, so here, I have made it uh, bigger, so you can see what is happening. So you have a, a, a mix of moving average, and the price is super complicated. Again, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. So when you see that, it doesn't mean that your moving average are pointless, you just have to do that. You take a high point, a low point, and you make your rectangle. Because if you have two moving average that are crossing, and if you have the price which is doing basically bullshit, it means that you are in a range. And remember, range could be triangle or could be rectangle. So forget about your moving average, put uh, a low and a down, and until the price uh, stays between those two lines, you are in a range. So it means that the, uh, the trend uh, will not start when you have a cross or will not start when the price is below the moving average, but only when the price will be below the moving average and below uh, the support that it has to break. Or in those cases, I would recommend going out with friends and just like actual buying Yeah. It's hard to trade on those conditions. Actually, you, do, you, you shouldn't trade in this condition. Yeah. You, you have to wait the, 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 the break. And here you have the same thing. A lot of uh, you know, a lot of problems. So you take a, a high point, a low point, and until we stay here, you don't do 
basically uh, anything. Uh, OK, that's all for the moving average. So if we can resume the moving average, it's, you can use it to identify a trend, and uh, you can use it to identify pot, pot, pot possible bounds. And you can, of course, use a moving average for the trend and another moving average uh, for the bounds. Uh, maybe if you want to speak a bit more, uh, Ilian, of your 200, like example of trades, uh, or because I know you use the 200, right? Or? I use it from time to time, but I may. I use it from time to time, but I mainly use it like uh, the way I showed. Uh, nothing to say, I use it on a, the closing price, but you can try different, uh, different parameters. Maybe you can try the uh, two moving average, like uh, the one that Pascal showed you, where you have an area more than a line. I mean, it's easier for me to read the chart with just one. I know it's an area, so I take that into account when I make a decision. But if it's easier for you to look at it like that, uh, to uh, define the area with color, it's, it's okay. I mean, that's, that's easier for some people. Does someone have a question about moving average? Okay. So another indicator are volume. So volume are uh, important and not important, depending on the market that you will use. As example, if you use Forex, uh, bah, it, there is no volume actually in Forex. You, you can't access to the real volume because Forex is a decentralized uh, market. So if you know cryptocurrency, it's the same. There is no central price. Every uh, market maker, every broker have a different price, uh, different volume. So every time you're going to see volume on a Forex platform, it's not the real volume. Actually, it's a number of transactions that the broker receives. But in stocks market or in commodities, it's the real volume. So it could be a very good information. I am not a big fan uh, of volume since I'm a Forex trader. Uh, so maybe if you have more things to add on it, but I will just quickly tell you how to read them and maybe after Volo can tell you a bit more why it's important. So you have two kinds of volume. The one that you can read uh, in function of uh, the time. So as example, this one, I think I have an animation actually. Okay, so this one represent the quantity of, uh, uh, I mean, the volume of a buy and sell during this period. So if it's a one hour chart, during one hour, there have been, I don't know, maybe $10 million of exchange on these stocks or this currency or whatever. When the candle is green, it means that the price has been up. When it's red, it means that the price has been down. So it does, when it's red, it doesn't mean that the volume are lower than the volume before. It just means that the price has fallen. So quick, quick uh, thing we can see here that we had a movement going up. And as you see, the volume were decreasing. So there were less interaction, less trades. Suddenly, the, the movement is going down. And we see that it comes with higher volume, so maybe it means something, uh, if you want to comment on it. Yeah, here maybe I can add. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use it for a bit. So maybe it's a good idea for you to look uh, when a volume is. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you see when the volume is increasing, as Pascal said, the price is going high. But nevertheless, here is still increasing, but the volume is lower. That means that the buying pressure is lower as well. So basically what means that the, the buyers are getting off the market and it's very probable for the next movement the sellers to win and to push the price back down. So this is maybe something like a formation or an indicator, however you like to call it, that you should uh, consider it on the markets. So again, we don't have time to go over a lot of things about volume, but uh, if you are interested about stocks and commodities, you can ask Valo about uh, usage of the volume in trades. You have another kind of volume that I do prefer. It's, there is a lot of name actually of this. People call it a volume profile, market profile, whatever. Uh, let's just call them volume per price. So here we had the volume per period. This is the volume for this hour. And the volume per price, of course, it's the volume that happened on this price. So how to read it? This price, let's assume it's three euro. The 
total volume of free euro was, as example, 20 million dollars. It means that at the price of free euro, there have been free uh, 20 million dollars of exchanges. So the information that it can provide, you can see that there are prices that are with very small volume, so it means there is very few buyer and seller, and you have prices that have a lot of volume. So I will ask you a question. What do you think it means, or, or, or what, is, what information is important for us when we are at a price with very small volume? Do you think it's some, an information which is important? Do you think that uh, it's an information that is absolutely not relevant? If I tell you, hey, we go to a price with very small volume, by intuition, what you will think? The market is waiting. I will wait just to see where will be the price of the market going, but not going down. And? There are no major events that have impact on the market at that particular point of time. So, it, 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 no, I know. <laughs> So, so actually, by, by intuition, you will say those are uh, prices that are not important and those are prices that are very important. It's exactly the opposite. Actually, if you have very, very few volume of one on, on, on a price, it basically means that they had a very violent reaction or a very strong trend. So you might, see, you might say that it's possible if you have a strong trend or a strong movement that you have few volume. But it's, it's, it's actually how it works the supply and the demand. If you have here only, but the, really only, one guy who wants to sell, only one guy in the whole planet, he's ready to sell at this price. But you have 10 guys who wants to buy. So there is not enough seller for all those 10 buyers. So as example, let's say that they all want to buy the same quantity. So the seller here, he will only sell to one buyer. And the, the other buyer, they will have no choice to buy at other sellers where there is more volume. So actually, this price is super important. And you can see in, uh, a uh, what's the name of this uh, chart? Uh, when you have a huge amount of uh, volume per trade, I have drawn uh, uh, two lines, you can see that actually it's where you have candles which are on the same level, you know? So, as example here, you have a, a, a square formation and you have a lot of volume. It means that the price has stayed here a long time. And in the opposite, here you have a lack of volume per price. <clears throat> so it means that this area has been absolutely not traded a lot. And what you can see, it's always when you have huge movement. Look that all the huge movement, so this huge one, this huge one, this huge one, it's only where there is a, a very low volume per, uh, per price. And, and the opposite, where you have a huge amount of volume, the market are super complicated to analyze. So me, I'm using this to try to identify the zone where I think it could be a huge movement. So when I'm here, I, I think that it can be up or it can go down. But I know that if it, if it goes down, there is very few order. So maybe it can do exactly the same thing as here and as here. It means it can go pretty quick to the, the, the next level with a lot of volume. And it works pretty good, this approach. So of course, it doesn't help you to trade. It doesn't help you to decide if you have to buy or sell. But again, it gives you another information that says it, there is a probability that it goes there in a very strong and very violent movement. And here you have the volume per uh, period. Uh, per, uh, per time. Yeah. Here maybe I can add that uh, in a conditions that uh, there is a huge movement, that uh, doesn't mean that uh, the, the sellers or the buyers, it doesn't matter, are uh, going off the market. It may mean that they're not there. So for example, if the movement continues, especially in the stock market, that means that the guys that want to sell, they, are, they have to sell on a uh, like a bad price. So basically, uh, the difference between the buyers and the sellers is bigger, and that's what makes the movement huge. So basically, I don't know if you know what's a spread, but basically the spread is the difference between the buyers and the sellers. When this uh, thing basically increases, the movements are getting uh, bigger because there is uh, more space between the buyers and the sellers. And whoever wants to win, he has to push the price further in the, his direction. And here you can see few volume, 
very violent reaction. I mean, the price goes down and poof. So if you combine this, plus the moving average, plus the, the, all the things that you have learned, let's say, last week or so, you, you can start to have some piece of the puzzle that you can assemble. Do you have question about this, or it was clear? The volume per price? Is volume any so, Sorry? Is volume useful enough? So it's, it's, uh, in Forex, it's called a tick, and it's the number of uh, variation or transaction, sorry. No, it's the number of price update. A tick, it's a price update that happens. So this is a Forex chart. So basically, it shows the number of transactions that happen. So there is uh, a big chance that when you have a lot of transactions, you had a lot of volume, and when you have very few transactions, you have few volume. So it's useful because it works, but you can't say that you are analyzing the volume. A way to analyze the volume of the Forex, you need to use a centralized market. So the only way to trade Forex in a centralized way is to use uh, the future contract, but maybe uh, another time we can go over what is a future contract. But yeah, Forex can be traded in a centralized way uh, using a future rather than uh, spot Forex. So you're saying it still uses a tick volume? Yeah, tick volume. Yeah, yeah I, I use tick volume, not here, but this one. And it, it just gives information, again, so. Uh, and if you are really into uh, knowledge, uh, you should go on Google and type market profile because there is a lot of things to know about volume because they make patterns. This is a B, sometimes it's a P, sometimes it's a D, sometimes it's a C. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's patterns that are recognizable and can give you a lot of information, but we're going to kill you if we if we speak about this. So again here, strong reaction, zero volume. So really try to see the connection. 